Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me for tonight's episode of Paleo Peak. Uh, it's got some, uh, it's almost a Paleo Peak and Arachno news at the same time because this is about a new fossil spider. Uh, so I hope you are here for it because I definitely am. I always like to check IFL Science for the latest uh, on paleontology, and I recommend that you subscribe to IFL Science as well. This is an article by Rachel Funnel. Astonishing 15 million year old spider fossil is the second largest ever found. It's five times bigger than its living relative. So even though modern spiders are the biggest that they've ever, that we know of, there's nothing bigger in the fossil record than the extant, um, the extant tarantula uh, ter uh, genus Therophosa or the giant huntsman spiders of uh, Southeast Asia in the family, oh my God, it's gonna kill me if I can't remember this, um, Heteropoda, yes, Heteropoda. So the Heteropoda and Therophosa, larger than anything in the fossil record, but Nephilia, is about the same size as the biggest one in the fossil record. And that's the only fossil spider that's bigger than this one, but we'll get to that in a second. Because Nephilia are, <clears throat> are web building spiders, even though the bad bug video that we did a couple of weeks ago insisted that they lived in burrows for some reason. Uh, really weird stuff. This is a brand new one. And all the species that are related to this in modern time are much smaller. So let's find out who it's related to and what it's all about. A spider bonanza kicked off in Australia during the Miocene at the time when a change in the climate dried up the landscape. This gave a group of spiders called mygalomorph spiders an opportunity to diversify. Mygalomorphic spiders, again, those are the downward facing fangs, tarantulas, and uh, trapdoor spiders, uh, funnel web spiders, uh, mouse spiders, they, they, they are megalomorphic spiders, as opposed to Arania, where the uh, fangs go inward towards each other, uh, which is pretty much every spider, every other spider that you can think of, uh, from wolf spiders to uh, webs, or to orb weavers, uh, to black widows and brown recluses, uh, jumping spiders, everything else is uh is an arania continuing on which would be really cool to see if we had many spider fossils to work with the record is regrettably sparse but scientists recently discovered a world first fossil that comes from a new genus and species of arachnid it's the fossil, uh, let me see here. Sorry, sitting on my foot. It's the first fossil of its kind ever discovered. It is massive. It dates back to the Miocene, a period that spans 23 to 5 million years ago. But our chunky trapdoor spider was only stamping around between 11 and 16 million years ago. As the second largest uh, spider fossil ever found is about five times bigger than similar spider species that still walk the earth today. In terms of size, it's comparable to a modern wolf spider at around uh, 50 millimeters or two inches uh, toe to toe. Uh, named Mega, Mono Mega Monodontium McCleskey. Its genus name is a reference to the nearest, to its nearest living relative, a group of tiny little dwelling bush, a brush footed trapdoor spiders in the genus Monodontium. The latter name is after Dr. Simon McCleskey, who discovered the fossil in June of 2020. 
and so got to live the dream of having a species named after him. It's actually kind of in bad taste, I think, to name a species after yourself. You should name it after somebody who's important to the field other than yourself or something regional or something about its characteristics. I think, I think it's taboo to name it after, your, uh, after yourself. So if somebody else wants to name a spider after him, that's fine. Just my opinion on when it comes to naming new species. If I named a new species, I wouldn't name it something, something, I don't know, Latrodectus mecuni or something like that. I would, I would name it, um, yeah, if, if this was like from, from Australia, I could name it, you can, uh, from the, the desert, I could name it maybe Outbacky or Mega Outbacky or, yeah, there's lots of things you could do. You name it after another spider scientist. The outstanding fossil is a type of brush-footed trapdoor spider that would have hunted by ambushing prey that made a big mistake of walking within reach of its camouflage burrow. Its lifestyle could explain why it's taken humans so long to retrieve a fossil like this one. Not only is it the largest fossilized spider to be found in Australia, but it is the first fossil of the family Barry Chelidae, or Barry Kelidae, I think that would be, Barry Kelidae that has been found worldwide, said Queensland Museum arachnologist Dr. Robert Raven as, or in a statement who was supervising the author's study. Yeah, if he had named it after Dr. Raven, that would have been tasteful. Uh, if he named it uh, Mega Monodontium Ravani, or Raveni. Ravenna? Would, is Raven feminine in Latin? I can't even. I can't even, guys. I can't even hive. Not only is it the, 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 the we already read that. Okay, there are around 300 species of brush-footed trapdoor spiders alive today, but they don't seem to become fossils very often. This could be because they spend so much time inside burrows and so aren't in the right environment to be fossilized. Its discovery will enable scientists to fill in some gaps in the knowledge of ev the evolution of spiders. And they've already learned a few things by taking up close peeks at its finer details, which remarkably have stayed intact over tens of millions of years. Scanning electron mi micros microscopy uh, allowed us to study minute details of the claws and seti in the spider's pedipalps, legs, and main body, said University of Canberra Associate Professor Michael Fries. Seti are hair-like structures that can range in function. Yeah, and arthropods have them generally. Uh, they can sense chemicals and vibrations, defend the spider against attack, and even make sounds. Yep, that's uh, called stridation when they do that. They'll rub them together. It's what uh, trapdoor spiders do when you hear a spider it sounds like it's hissing that's what that actually is the sound of them rubbing that together um yeah and they can also urticating hair or seti the ones that tarantulas throw at you uh they, they all are electrosensitive they respond to uh electromagnetism and you can learn more about this new discovery in the zoological journal of the linnaean society so that's a, a a zoological journal, which uh, are great if you want to keep on the cutting edge of, uh, of animal science. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and pop that sucker open just so you can get a good look at it. Um, when it comes to articles in here, uh, these ones are generally open access, so you can you can come in and look at different pictures of the spiders and, and some of the. Uh, you can read on it too if you're if you're really that want to get that deep into it. But they got some uh, morph uh, morphometric measurements, which I love. And now they did have a quote. I did have a citation from Ravens 1994. So at least seeing they recognized. See, it would have been such a good idea to name it after Raven. I think that would have been like a really cool thing for this guy to do. But it's like, nope, name it after me. Okay. Because it looks like he's like citing him and everything in this paper. Or, yeah. 
but it's fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not telling him who he can and can't name it after. It's his, it's his species. Um, oh. all right. So yeah, this is, uh, this is our resource journal and I'm going to I'm actually going to bookmark it because I'd like to come in and explore more of their articles. All right. So that was a little bit of Paleo Peak, a new fossil spider for you. And uh, always love learning about new uh, discoveries in ancient species, whether they're packed in amber or smashed in Lagerstätten. Uh, whichever way they're fossilized, I want to see them and I want to learn about them. And I want to share about them with you. So thank you for joining me in Paleo Peak. Please remember to be kind. Take care. We'll see you next time. All right. Uh, well, we'll see if I uh, don't go anywhere because I still got another segment I'm going to do here. But uh, if I were naming a species, uh, I would probably try to name it after uh, somebody who's influential to the field that I was that I was researching. Right. Like if it was a, a spider. Yeah. I was just, for instance, like quoting or uh, citing Raven or um, if it was like a primate or something, you could say you, you, you could cite Fosse, stuff like that. Actually, you know what? If I, if I named a species of spider today, a new species of spider, I would probably name it after PZ. I think I'd name it after PZ Myers because he's my spider friend. Um, yeah, that's probably what I do, uh. Probably name it. Uh, what would it be? My what's the what would the uh, Latinized version of Myers be? Myeri. Myersi. Probably something like that. Yeah. I think so. I do. All right. So, please remember to be kind. Take care, and we'll see you next time. I, oh yeah. Oh, yeah.